Have you noticed, uh, you know, do you attack business the same way as sports? And have you ever had a moment where you're like, I got to chill out because the business world's not like the sports world? Oh, um, the same, but also different, right? Same in the sense that the attention to detail is there, just like it is in sport, the attention to detail, right? But it's different because of the intensity that you bring. You know, it's not like a game. It's not like practice. Right? You have to have patience, you have to challenge people, you have to hire well and find people that have a certain level of, you know, that demand excellence from themselves, right? And have that attention to detail about themselves. Mm -hmm. And then you wind up building a team of people that have that passion and commitment to excellence. So that's the, that's the difference, is that now I'm kind of more in a GM right. position as opposed to being a player that is on the ground floor bringing out the intensity in each guy every single play it's a little different have you noticed a moment where you're like i can't uh maybe i can't be as intense as i was during sports i can't demand people to be here till midnight or practice without a ball for three hours or yeah no know, like listen my, my thing is really simple here is that you know i expect excellent work we all do so i don't care if you're here in the office at 6 a.m and you leave at midnight if the work that you do is average, then this is not the home for you. Conversely, you cannot be in an office at all and have excellent work. This is the place for you. Mm -hmm. So I don't really care if you're here. You know, there's a lot of guys that get in the gym and work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard, but then they can't transition that to 7.30. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can already tell that I wouldn't make it one day in this office. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm really good at looking busy, but not doing anything. So yeah, that no, would be a problem. You, got, you, gotta, you gotta get results. Or... So, Kobe, one of the things that I've been super impressed with by watching kind of your organization, how you transition, is really the team that you surround yourself with, you know, whether it's uh, you know, from Brian to Molly yeah. to, to the rest of your team. What are the characteristics that you, you're looking for to bring into your team? Is it much like you want a teammate for the Lakers, those type of, or, or what, are you, what are you looking for specifically? Yeah, the most important thing is curiosity first. I want curious people, people that ask questions, that want to figure things out, figure out new ways to do things. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the most important thing. And then from that curiosity, having the determination to see that curiosity through, mm -hmm. right? To figure out those steps. And if you figure out, okay, this is a particular course of action that we feel like we should be taking. Has it been done before? No, but that's exciting to me. Let's figure it out. Mm -hmm. Those are the characteristics that I look for, mm -hmm. first and foremost. So you say curiosity. I read a story how you like text with uh, business people three in the morning, four in the morning, yeah. Mike Rapoli, I think you yeah. do it with, uh, uh, you know, people in the tech industry. Yeah. Has anyone been like, yo, Kobe, just chill out? Like, stop texting me. <laughs> no, because they're, the they're all about as crazy as I am. Yeah. <laughs> what is that, though? Is there just, can you see it in a person the minute you meet him, like this guy or this woman, they just want it more than everyone else? I think so. I think you can sense it. You can, you know, when you're having a conversation with somebody, you can tell if they're truly passionate about what Do it is that they're doing. Yeah. Do I, mean, I have it? Listen, bro, you can't build what you build <laughs> okay, and not be right. that. Cool. All right? right. Good. If nice. you didn't have it, you wouldn't be sitting here with True. anybody anyway, because you don't put up with that True. shit either. True. <laughs> I kind of right? snake my way in, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can, you can certainly recognize that, and um, you feel a sense of familiarity mm -hmm. with that person. You said, uh, I read a quote that you said you love business as much as basketball. There's yeah. no way that's true. It's 100% true. You, there's no way. you love. I mean, basketball was your life, you, your passion, everything. You, you're telling me you love doing business as much. If you could, you know, basically snap a finger and be 25-year-old Kobe or the Kobe today, you wouldn't go back and, and keep playing basketball? No, because I've already done it. See, here's the thing. When, when I was playing and you know, teammates would say, oh, Kobe's not out on the road. What is he doing? You see me on the plane, he's reading. What is he reading? He's writing. What is he writing? Mm -hmm. I'm practicing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm writing. I'm practicing. I'm understanding how to tell stories. I'm reading Joseph Campbell, how to create arcs, compelling arcs and plots. I'm reading that stuff. So this is going back 15 years, right? So I don't just retire right dear basketball and luck into winning an Oscar, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That stuff comes from hard work and from studying for 15 years how to write and how to organize structure, right? And you can't do that without having a serious love or commitment to the craft. And, and that's, I mean, Alex has told the story, but you know, your rookie year in, in Seattle when you started investing in real estate, and basically while you were playing baseball, also getting, you know, working in business and learning the ropes in business. 
Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, Kobe and I have so much in common. We kind of came up at the same time. But one of the things we have in common is we would show up at universities. Yeah. And I know he would show up at Duke. I, you know, I took classes at Columbia Business School, Miami Business School. And people are like, why aren't you in a yacht? Why aren't you in vacation? I'm like, I'm practicing. I am getting ready. I don't know when they're going to kick me out of this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at the same time, it's not just about moving forward, but also it's about having fun. I, I agree with Kobe. I'm, I sometimes forget that I played basketball in the major leagues for, yeah. I mean, baseball for 23 years. Yeah. Because I'm so excited in the moment. Yeah. The present. yeah. That yeah. sounds really weird to people. <laughs> right. <laughs> they you think we're I mean? lying. It does. It's really I weird. feel like you're How lying. How is that you, you, There's no way, man. Like, you know, like I remember I said, um, I told somebody, I said, listen, if what I do in the next 20 years is not better than my last 20, then I failed. And mm -hmm. like, well, that's disrespectful to what you've done the last 20 <laughs> years. How could you say? My man, I wouldn't accomplish what I accomplished my last 20 years if I did not have this mentality to begin with, so. Mm -hmm. Kobe, one of the things that fascinated me, you have skin in the game. This oh, is, yeah. So you saved your money. Oh, yeah. You did well, and then you invested. Any advice for a lot of athletes now coming out who get paid, say, big yeah. endorsements, and they seem broke in a couple of years? Yeah, well, because here's the problem. You know, once you retire, you don't have that source of income that's coming in, right? So even if you save over a 15-year career, if your spending habits remain the same, eventually that well's gonna run dry, right. right? So unfortunately for us athletes, retirement age is 32, 34, if you're lucky, 37 like myself, what comes next, right? So the question needs to be, what comes next? What can I do? What is my passion? Not where I can create the most value or generate the most revenue, but what is my next passion? When you find that next passion, then everything else will make sense. But that's the hardest part for us. Now, uh, I know that Scope we use video games. I think video games are actually the hottest part of technology. And the chips that go into video games make it so it's lifelike. Uh, this will be what, like NBA 2K for some TV shows that have uh, characters? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely could be. <laughs> are, are, you, are you getting good at reading balance sheets and income statements? No, and... I, I, I'm getting better at it, but it is not my strength. Right, so for example, when Jeff and I sat around and said, okay, we should do this company. His mind automatically went to operations. Yep. Mine went to story, logo, and right. So right. we just we just went different ways. We're a team, right? Same in the, at the core, which is two different sides of the brain. I, I gotta ask this: How? Uh, just as a person, I mean, I, I've idolized you from the days you came out of Lower Murray, okay, oh, from the you. Aces. How can you be so humble? Honest to God. I mean, listen to what he, he asked you a question, and you could have said, yeah, I'm getting good at it. But no, you just said, I'm a student. Yeah, That's no. just been your way. But, I mean, but we have to constantly learn. I mean, that's why uh, the, the, our, our mantra is value growth, because to grow, you have to constantly learn. You have to constantly move, constantly improve. I mean, that's the, that's the key. That's what makes life fun, I think. CEO you admire more than others. See, I admire more than others. Well, I, I work very, very closely with Mark Parker, and Mark has been a great mentor of mine for years. I mean, it's there's times where I'll, you know, I can't sleep and I'll shoot Mark a, t Mark a text message about, you know, I'm having trouble building this company here. What do you think about this, that, and the other? How did you do it? Right. And he gives me very detailed responses. So, you know, MP for me has been, Does been everything. Does he ever sleep? I've shot an email to try to get a uh, buck. Yeah. Right boy, uh, oh, because yeah. you're doing such a great book. Yeah. He comes back immediately, he's a bull region. I mean, that, yeah. that guy's on his game. Yeah, he's always thinking. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a thinker. And uh, you know what I love doing is cold calling people, getting their book list. <laughs> what did you read? What did you learn? How did you learn it? You know, those are the questions. Um, LeBron's got a new show on our network called Cleveland Hustles. Yes. Any advice for him getting into the world of media? Well, no, no, no advice really. I mean, it sounds like this is something that he loves to do and yeah. he's passionate about doing. I mean, right. that's really the key. You know, if you have the love to do it, you know, you'll be able to handle whatever bumps come your way. So I'm sure it'll be just fine. Well, I just need, is it possible, I mean, when you do bring one of these companies public, do it here, okay? <laughs> you don't bring the bell again. It's too exciting. We don't get a lot of big guys like this. Last done, question. Done. We're, getting, we're getting viewers asking, you know, can, can I get in on a B round? At what point do outside <laughs> investors have a chance? Jeff? Yeah, I mean, look, right, right now, we're investing proudly our money. We want to learn, we want to grow, we want to do it on our dime. At some point, we might we might raise money. We're not prepared to do that now. Uh, for some of these great companies, Jim said it best. Let's get them public, let's get them out there, and then people can buy on the public markets. Uh, when you look at uh, your career, all right, um, I, there's a lot of times when you had to carry a team. This seems like the old days, though, when you had the full panoply of guys at, at the Lakers. Yeah. It's not like, you know, because last few years, yeah. I thought you had to carry well, yourself. That's the beautiful part about business. Right, you're not restricted by salary cap regulations. <laughs> right, you know, the roster's not Careful, restricted. Careful, we might have to start giving people raises. You know, you know, you get a chance to work with people that are 
uh, that think the same way and have the same kind of passion. It's just, it makes for a beautiful environment. Uh, tell us about your fund. People may not know exactly what you're doing, so just give us the basics and tell us some things, maybe an investment or two that you are excited about that shows the focus that you yeah, described. Well, I mean, we, we started, uh, my partner and I, Jeff Steibel. Who's you know, here tonight. Who's here tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, about three years ago, uh, I started looking at um, what comes next. And I started looking in the investment space primarily you know, when you're in the NBA and you're a young player, you have all these meetings. And you sit around with a lot of financial people and they explain to you um, um, how you need to save and how post-career, you know, uh, if you continue to live the lifestyle that you're accustomed to, eventually that money's gonna run out, et cetera, et cetera. So I started kind of sitting there thinking, okay, what is the counter to that? How can I use the influence that I currently have now to build something of value um, that can uh, that won't dwindle over time. But so you were thinking this when you time. were 19. No, I was thinking. I started thinking this when I was about 34, okay. 35 or All so. Right. Uh, you know, when you when you rupture your Achilles and you're sitting in bed, you have a lot of time to think. <laughs> right. And uh, when it hit me, I, I wish I had thought about it earlier. So anyway, Jeff and I started uh, our fund right. and started investing our own capital and. Uh, you know, seeing where that comes, seeing where that leads to. And I actually started enjoying it and I uh, started seeing great potential here. And, uh, and hopefully it can be a great example for other athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now, you know, the, the model, the way it's set up, like athletes will get endorsement bills, right? And you get the cash. And but you once get a big you're deal out of the game, you're out of the game, That's right? exactly right. right. Because eventually that money runs dry, right. right? So how can you use the influence that you currently have and create somewhat of a hybrid model of endorsement money where you have that liquidity, but also you build something of long-term value. Right. So give us a, give us an example of something you're excited about that you've invested in. Um, well, we, ha we have, I think we have a couple of our CEOs here, actually. I think Cindy is here from VIP Kids. There she is. She's right. awesome. And, and so I, VIP I think, Kids is where you have uh, English language teachers in the U.S. primarily, right? Teaching kids well, in China. Right. English. Right. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's basically so it. So America is the sweatshop for China. <laughs> is that a fair way to put it? Yeah, your way to put it, okay. not mine. All right. Uh, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> no, but it's, it's really about um, um, inspiring the kids in China to understand that there's a much, much bigger world out there and helping them have the opportunities. I mean, I'm sure you guys sat here and talked today at length um, about um, companies in China we really did. strategizing about coming Absolutely to the did. U.S., right? And that starts at a very, very young level and kids understanding the market, understanding the branding, understanding the language, right? So you got to take...